In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're continuing with volume 22, 3, 1927. And Jesus says to Louisa, my daughter, the kingdom of the divine fiat shall have one single will as its center, and that is the divine. See, the human, see, all we know is the human, and the human is fallen. Uh, you hear so many people, uh, I did this, and I did that, and I am this, and I am that, and me, and me, and me, and me, and no. We're here on earth to see Jesus. We're here on earth to fall in love with Jesus and Mary. It's, see, the, our intellect, memory, and will have to be changed. We, our intellect is we must begin to think with the mind of Christ. And that's with the Holy Church, our, dogma, our doctrine, our tradition, the Holy Sacraments, the sacred scripture. Uh, this teaches us how to think correctly. Now with the divine will, Jesus is saying, I want you to think the way I think. There are so many uh, great saints you know, Franciscans and Dominicans and Benedictines, but they taught us what they knew. Jesus now saying, I want to teach you what I know. I want to teach you how I think. So our intellect, we got to begin to see things from a divine perspective, number one. Number two, our memory. It's not about me, 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 my family, me, my nation, me, me. It's no, it's, it's about the Lord. How did Jesus live? How did Mary live? That's why when we pray the Holy Rosary, we're, we're meditating on the mysteries, you know, and, and thank God we now have 20 mysteries because we can go through and, and go between those mysteries. Look at Jesus, look at Mary, listen to Jesus, listen to Mary. For example, how did they live? You know, there was three groups of, of the Jews. There was the, uh, um, they were the uh, <laughs> Pharisees, the Sadducees, and, you know, Mother Angelica's word about the Sadducees. The Sadducees didn't believe in, in heaven, uh, didn't believe in res the death, resurrection. It didn't believe uh, in angels and saints. And that's why she said they are sad, you see. So, so, so you have the Pharisees, you have the Sadducees, but you had the Essenes. Who were the Essenes? They were the first Christians. They, they longed for the Messiah. They looked for the Messiah. Like, well, what, did, what, did, um, what did Andrew say to Peter? He says, we have found the Messiah. When, what they, when they said to Nathaniel, we found the Messiah from Nazareth. He goes, what good can come from Nazareth? Because they knew the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. So the, these that longed for the Messiah were the first Christians. Now, we have been given the only prayer that Jesus has given us, and that's the that's the Our Father. And we are longing for the kingdom. It's our life. We love Jesus. We love Mary. Who, Mary was in a scene as well. Mary's parents were a scenes. John the Baptist's parents were a scenes. John the Baptist was a high priest because his father was a high priest. You know, everyone was waiting for the Messiah. The Essenes were at least. And that's why Jesus said to the others, your father is the devil. They said, we're no illegitimate breed like you, Jesus. And he goes, so you know my origins, do you? <laughs> so he was, he said to them, you know, your father is the devil. The Essenes are, that's what's missing in the divine will. We have to be longing for the kingdom as the, as the Essenes were longing for the Messiah. It's a very important time to live. It's very, very important. So Jesus says, one single will is going to be the center, the divine will. This is Jesus. Therefore, one shall be the will of all, diffusing into all, embracing everything, and shall give happiness and order among, uh, happiness, order, harmony, strength, and beauty to God and man, to all. So it shall be in the kingdom of, the, of one single will. Where, you know, you in a family, um, what's really sad in a family is the father has the will, the mother has the will, the ch children have wills, and it's disruption. You know, the family should be, you know, 
at the dinner table and now we'll pray and the father leads in prayer it's 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 order it's 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 love it's the same thing with praying the rosary you get together in the family and you pray the holy rosary you get to fam to family together on sunday the lord's day and you keep it holy it's not a it's not a sports day so we're going to learn again how to live this catholic life this universal life the life that adam lost the life that jesus and mary bring to earth the life now that we we possess this this new and divine way of holiness this new and beginning uh we're, we're, we're not waiting uh, for anything but the kingdom. The kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus has chosen us, predestined us to live at this time. So we want that one single will. We don't want to be in disorder. We want to be, see, Adam was disobedient. Adam was unfaithful. And, and we, we have to stop being disobedient to, to our Lord, our, our, the teachings and stop being unfaithful to the church. So the first thing we have to learn is how to keep holy the Sabbath. It's not another sports day. Did you know that almost every sport was brought, except for wrestling and running, after the birth of Louisa? Football, soccer, hockey, tennis, golf. That's where the children are. That's where the people are. Worshiping pigskin being thrown from one end of the field to another. It's that Sunday is not a sports day. Sunday is the Lord's day. We must glorify our God on Sunday. It, it, Jesus is going to teach us. And if we, if we don't keep holy the Sabbath, the rest of the week is miserable. But if we keep holy the Sabbath, that's one day out of seven, how great it's going to be, how good it's going to be for us. So what Jesus says, so it shall be the kingdom of one single will, one will for all, all for one will, that what renders the celestial fatherland happy, if not the will of God and the will of all of humanity. One will. Oh, if another will uh, that were not that of God could enter into heaven, would that cannot be, the saints would lose their perennial peace. The saints would feel disorder of a will that is not divine that does not contain all the goods, that is not holy, a not bearer of happiness and of peace. And so all unanimous, they would cast it out. Therefore, the kingdom of the fiat shall have one only my divine will reigning. This is why we're gonna be regenerated. And it alone, as law, as regime, as dominion. Now think about the word dominion. See, the devil loves to mock God. We're going to take care of your vote. Jesus' dominion is coming. And by virtue of it, all shall be happy with one single happiness. And there shall never be contentions, but perennial peace. After this, Louisa says, I was feeling the great effort that I was making in writing. And we make the great effort in reading. And the hardship that I experienced. And I felt undecided whether I should continue to write or for us to continue to read or not. And my beloved Jesus inciting me told me, my daughter, each additional word about my divine will can be one more key. See, Jesus says to Louisa, you must be the key for the Holy Father to use. God gave the Holy Father the keys to the kingdom. You have to see how this all fits together. Don't worry about a thing. Don't, God has got everything in control. How about my will? It can only be one more key in order to open the kingdom of the supreme fiat. Each knowledge about the divine will can be a new door in his form to give more ease, more entrances to let the children of the kingdom enter. We're entering into this. And when that main door opens, when that light of light emanates from the kingdom, it's going to be glorious. We're going to be part of it. We're going to begin. That's why Jesus says, you are the light of the world. He says, you are the salt of the earth. He's expecting us to say yes. And so he's given us the perfect example, our lady and our Lord himself. And now this little newborn, who is this Louisa Figueroa? This is, is such a great thing. We're going to enter this kingdom. 
Each simile about my, my divine will is one more path that is formed in order to facilitate the communications of this kingdom. And the littlest thing that regards my fiat is a heartbeat of it that it wants to form in the midst of the children of its kingdom and to suffocate this heartbeat, my daughter, is not appropriate. You don't, don't, I, I saw a friend of mine, you know, he's been in the divine will a long time, but he's had some hard times. And I said, where's the book of heaven? He says, it's on my desk. I said, is it full of dust? Where's the book of heaven for you? Don't suffocate this. Read it, study it. Can make that commitment to Jesus. I want to hear you every day, Lord, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. God goes, good. I'll do as much as you want or as little as you want. I can give it to you 30, 60, or 100 fold. What do you want, Jesus says. So he says, the simile about my, my divine will is one more path that is formed in order to facilitate the communications of this kingdom. And the littlest thing that regards my fiat is the heartbeat of it. And it wants to form in the midst of the children of its kingdom and to suffocate the heartbeat, my daughter, is not appropriate. This heartbeat shall bring a new and divine life bilocated from this heartbeat of Jesus to be enjoyed by those souls who shall have the fortune of possessing this kingdom. Don't you know that in order to be able to say that a kingdom exists, first it is necessary to form it and then say it exists. Therefore, it is necessary to form the paths, necessary for the security doors, necessary for the keys of gold, not forged with some other metal, in order to make the entrance into the kingdom of my divine will easy. One path less, one key that is missing, one door that is locked can render the entrance into it more difficult and less smooth. Therefore, everything I, Jesus, say to you, Louisa, serves not only to form this kingdom, but also to make it easier for those who shall want to possess it. So Louisa, the firstborn daughter of my divine will, must have the care of rendering what regards the kingdom of my eternal fiat easier. So what is Jesus saying to us? He's really showing us that this new and divine way of holiness that he's giving us is through Louisa. If you want to be a Franciscan, you follow Francis. If you want to be a Benedictine, you follow Benedict. You want the divine will? There's only one who possesses it, Louisa. And it's not just the divine will. Jesus says the prodigy of prodigies is Louisa Picaretta and my divine will. They go hand in hand. The sorrow of my divine will is great because of so many denials from humanity. Therefore, with divine and invincible patience, the divine will as mother is waiting for her children who by knowing her may tear the veil from creating thing, created things that hides her. See, this is, remember the veil was torn in the temple. It's Jesus. Now there's another veil that's being torn that hides the divine will, that the souls may recognize the breast of their mama and grateful may suckle from those divine breasts with her True children, we're going to be fed by God. As the Israelites were fed manna in the desert, we, we not only have the second bread, the super substantial bread of the Holy Eucharist, but we have the first bread, the bread of the divine will. It, you, everything changes for you. It, you, become, you become in love with God because he, he is feeding you. He is nurturing you. He is leading you. We, we really become newborns. A newborn can't do anything by itself. See, that's why the saints built the churches, built the monasteries, built the convents, built the hospitals, built the orphanages. Jesus says, I'm building you the new Jerusalem. God says, it's now it's my turn to give to my children what I have promised from the beginning. See, this, this new and divine way of holiness is, is very close. It's here for those who want it. And you can become peaceful. You can become joyful. You can become happy when you forget yourself. I did this and I did this. Look at my trophies. Look at my, look at all my medals. Look, no, it's Jesus who's our savior. Jesus is our king. Jesus is our Lord. He's, he's, he's planned everything. And he's, he's allowed us to live at this time. What a, what a great time to be alive. He says, he says, um, 
and recognizing her, they shall not detach from her breast and she shall give them all the goods that shall have all the glory, all the contentment to see all of her children happy again. With these children, they shall have the honor, the glory to copy within themselves the mother who with so much love keeps them on her lap to nourish them with her divine milk. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't been abandoned by Jesus. He's now, he said, the last 2000 years was a time of rest, he said. I gave you my church, I gave you my gospels, I gave you my mother, I gave you everything, and now I rested. And now he says, now I speak again. And now he says to get the world ready for the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. What a great time to be alive. I'm 20, 2, 11, 19, 27. I was praying my round. See, this is one of the things that's essential for us to learn how to pray the rounds. If we learn how to pray the rounds, your whole life becomes a prayer. Yeah, you'll see things, you'll hear things, you'll smell things, you'll taste things in a new and divine way of holiness. Because Jesus said in volume 36, I gave humanity their senses so that God can be in charge of them. God wants to gaze in our gazing, listen in our listening, speak in our speaking, taste in our tasting, uh, uh, touch in our touching. He wants to be alive. So for, so for example, if Jesus is alive, who's in your family? Is he listening with your listening? Is he speaking with your speaking? Is he gazing with your gazing? Is he beating with your heart beating? Is he breathing with your breathing? If that's happening, your family is peaceful, joyful, and happy. It's heaven. There's no arguments. Jesus has got great plans. All that the saints have taught us is about virtues. And a, a saint would have a virtue or two. Jesus says, I want you to be filled with the life that I breathed into Adam the rule of God, the breath of God. I want you to be filled with this life. And, and she's, he says, the newborn has this. Go to her and watch what she can give you because she knows what I said to her. It's like, if you want to be a Franciscan, you follow Francis. You want the divine will, you go to Louisa. So she was praying around and we're, we are going to learn how to pray our rounds. It's going to be good. So then we're going to pray the round of creation and the round of redemption. I was praying around a creation. I was impressing my, I love you. Everything is an, I love you to God. And each created thing, and each leaf of the tree, each blade of grass, each grade of sand, each drop of water. It's, it's never ending. It's always, I love you. God has breathed, I love you into us. We want to breathe this, I love you with Jesus and Mary back to God. That divine, I love you back to God. Not a human, I love you. And that's what God is teaching us. Each creative thing. And I asked by virtue of that divine will that preserves them beautiful and whole, the kingdom of the supreme fiat might come upon earth. Lord, you know, one time Jesus said to Louisa, Louisa, what do you see on the leaves of the tree? She says, I see your I love you. And I see my mother's Mary's I love you. He says, where's your I love you? She says, I want my I love you's there. Instantly. See, this is God doing it. Instantly, all the trees of the earth were filled with her, I love you, on each leaf. That's what Adam did. Adam was praising God and loving God and glorifying God. That's what we do in front of the Blessed Sacrament. We fall in love with our Eucharistic Lord. The second bread, the super substantial bread of the Holy Eucharist. The first bread is the bread of the divine will, the bread that Adam possessed. What did Jesus say to Louisa? He said, I give my Eucharist to my children to prepare them for a perennial communion that Adam had. See, right now, for 15 minutes, and this is another thing we've got to learn. When you receive Holy Communion, the Mass ends. That is a time of praising God and loving God. It's the most glorious time on earth. That time right after Holy Communion, you are in communion with Jesus, and you can adore him and love him and praise him and thank him and bless him. What do we do? We get up, we go into fellowship. Sorry. We're, we had to fall in love with Jesus. Why? To prepare ourselves 
for the perennial communion that Adam lost. Adam walked and talked with God in, in communion with our God in paradise. That's what's happening again. Your communion doesn't have to end. You can, you can be in communion with God continuously. God's going to teach you that. That's what he wants. So after Holy Mass, that 15 minutes until the host dissolves, you are in communion with God. Again, we got to discipline ourselves to do that. That's what Jesus is teaching us. So again, that the king, the supreme fiat, fiat might come upon earth. And while I was doing this, I thought to myself, created things are inanimate. Therefore, they do not have the virtue of asking for a kingdom so holy. So all the leaves on the tree are inanimate. Jesus is saying to us, would you speak for them? He said to, he said to Adam, you're going to be the voice of all creation, of every animal, vegetable, and mineral, to praise God, to love God. He said to, he said to Adam, if I could, have, I could have put voices on everything, but I wanted you, Adam, to be the voice of all of creation. I love you. I praise you. I thank you. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. Mother Teresa went out after spending five hours in front of the Blessed Sacrament, went out five hours on the street to pick up a baby, bring it to the hospital to die. One at a time. What Jesus is teaching us is to take everyone and everything before the throne of God, as Adam did, as Jesus did, the new Adam, as Mary did, the new Eve to adore him and to love him and to praise him and to thank him and to bless him. Be the voice of all creation. Remember, Jesus said, I could, I, these rocks could cry out. And anything could have, God could do anything, but he said, I want humanity to be the voice. So when you learn how to pray the rounds, you're in prayer, you're in heaven, really, all day, adoring God, loving God, praising God, thanking God, glorifying God. I remember when we were first talking about this years ago, they said, find something that nobody's ever thought of to praise God. And I thought of dust under my bed. <laughs> I, I used to put dust under the bed to see if you know, there was supposed to be somebody cleaning. And I had dust under my bed for years, but it was, <laughs> I would say, well, let's praise God for dust. Lord, we, we thank you for that. We pray. Let the dust praise your name. Let the dust give glory to you, Lord. And then all the dust, all the dirt, all the, all the wind, all the weeds, all the weeds, everything and everyone. And, and again, your prayer life, see, then Jesus takes control. I remember St. Teresa was washing the dishes. And what would happen is the net, nun next to her would splash her and she'd get soaked. You know, and she'd say to Jesus, tell her to stop splashing these. Jen said, this is distracting me from prayer. And Jesus said to her, I enjoy it when she distracts you from prayer. Why? It's like a dog barking outside when you're in front of the blessed sacrament. Arr, 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 arr. You're going, huh? But Jesus is saying, I want you to be his voice, praising me, loving me, glorifying me. What happens is he takes care, he takes control of our prayer. Uh, uh, an ambulance goes by, Lord. Heal this person. Heal all the people that are sick. He, he leads you by what you hear, by what you, by what you see, what you smell, what you touch, what you taste. He's the one that's leading you in prayer. It's not, I got to do my prayers. I, I know some people that do their rosary real quick. Hail Mary, Father Christ, Lord, 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 Lord. Hail Mary, Father Christ, Lord, Lord. I'm done with my rosary. Well, you win. <laughs> you just won the race. See, it's prayer is falling in love, adoring God and loving God and praising God, glorifying God. That's what he taught Louisa. So Jesus says, well, while I, Louisa said, while I was doing this, I thought to, thought to myself, created things are inanimate. Therefore, they do not have the virtue of asking for a kingdom so holy. But while I was thinking of this to my beloved Jesus, he came out from within my interior. That's where Jesus dwells. She, for the first thing she said to, said to Jesus was, you be the king of my heart. I want the, my heart to be your throne. That's the very first thing. And then every act that you do, every round that you do, is another molecule added to Jesus to have this fullness. Why? To give birth to Jesus. You're to give birth to Jesus. Not like the Blessed Mother. 
but with your eyes, Jesus, gaze in my gaze and speak in my speaking, listen in my listening, beat in my heart beating, dance in my dancing. Everyone around, when, when, you, when you're around, I mean, I've been around a couple of saints, and let me tell you, 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 I'm just in awe of how peaceful, joyful, and happy they are. It's, it's a, I remember I, I, I said mass with my, with, with uh, private mass in the chap, uh, chapel at uh, the Vatican with John Paul II. And uh, all I can tell you is that guy was filled with the spirit. He was, there was power emanating from him. You know, I mean, just an amazing, it was just so, so amazing. Um, but see, God is, God, God wants to reign in us. That's why it says, listen, he says, uh, Jesus came out for within my interior. That's where he wants to be in us. Is Jesus' heart beating in your heart beating? Is Jesus breathing in your breathing? Is Jesus gazing in your gazing? This is what communion is supposed to bring you to, to be in this image and likeness. For holy baptism, we're in God's image. With this book of heaven, Jesus is teaching us how to be in his likeness. And he told me, my daughter, it is true that created things are without soul. However, inside each one of them runs life of my divine will. And only by virtue of the life of my divine will, it, uh, do, uh, it do, they maintain themselves uh, and just as they were created. Now, created things are all noble and queens. We all belonging to my, to my royal family. Now, this is another thing. You become a member of the little family of Louisa. Now, why is this important? This is going to be important. Um, when Jesus said it would be like in the time of Noah, what happened in the time of Noah? The, the sons of God interbred with the daughters of Adam and formed the Nephilim, and God destroyed the earth. And he said, I found one family. They had a pure line back to Adam and Eve. The DNA was not, not changed. One family. Here now, there's one family there's one family that does not, does not change from the DNA of Jesus and Mary. And that's the family of Louisa. And we're part of that. Jesus says, there will be a great chastisement where the large majority of humanity will be wiped off the face of the earth. It's nothing to be afraid of. He said, number two, my mother is marking all the little children in the holy divine will and no harm can come to them. Number three, the little children marked by my mother, the chastisement will have little or no effect upon them. And number four, he says, the survivors of this terrible chastisement will be the little children, the holy divine will. Why? Because the kingdom will be here. The kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven, and it's very, very close. If you don't know anything about Our Lady of Revelation, it's an approved apparition in, in, in Rome. Uh, Italy, Our Lady appeared to a man who was going to kill the Pope. He had a knife that said to kill the Pope with. He carved it in the handle. And Our Lady said to him, why are you trying to harm my son? And he goes, who are you? She says, I am, I am Our Lady of the revelation of what is to come. She appeared 40 days after Louisa died. When Jesus rose from the dead, 40 days later, he ascended into heaven. When Louisa died 40 days later, Our Lady of the D Revelation descended to earth and told Bruno, time has now come to an end. And he goes, the end of the world. She goes, no, the end of the era of the evil one. She says, my children are going to be uh, uh, in eternity where they belong. We do not belong here. This is a bus station. This is a train station. This is a plane station. We're waiting to get the ticket to go back home where we belong in eternity. That's where we belong. That's why when you spend time for the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus gets us out of time and space. And what has happened? She says, where they will enjoy the beatific vision eternally. That's why we were created, to enjoy our God. It's it's, I hear people at, at funerals, well, Joe just died and he's playing golf in heaven with his buddies. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. 
we are to in we are to enter into eternity and to enjoy the beatific vision. And then he sa she says after that, the devil and his children are going to be uh, always trapped in time and space. That's where we are. Always trapped in time and space, never entering into eternity, never to be able to enjoy the beatific vision. Why are we here? It's to get ready for heaven. It's to enjoy the beatific vision for eternity. That's our life. We're here. We, we've been kicked out of heaven. We've been kicked out of paradise. We listen to the, to the Lucifer. So God said, you have to go where he is. You didn't want to listen to me, paradise. You wanted, wanted him. And Jesus said, I saw Lucifer fall like lightning to the earth. We're with him. He's, we're under his thumb, even though we've been redeemed for 2,000 years. We're still under his thumb. Why? We still go to confession because we're not perfect. So what's God doing? He's getting us ready for heaven to come to earth and heaven, he's, the devil's been banished from heaven. He will be banished from earth, which means no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more sin, no more death. What's the three days of darkness? It's death. It's death coming to the earth. He's saying to Lucifer, take what's yours and get out of here. The kingdom is coming. A large majority will be wailing and grinding their teeth. When we pray, especially when we pray the rounds, watch what God is going to do for our family, our friends, all our loved ones. Watch what God is going to do. Our job is to stand in the breach as Moses stood in the breach for the Israelites. Our job is to stand in the breach for all of humanity. But we have to remember we don't know who's, who, who's on what side, but God said to uh, the evil one in Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you, Lucifer, and the woman, the blessed mother, between your seed and her seed. Women don't have seed. It's the children of God that she, she's the mother of. It's a new era that's going to begin. You have to understand God's got this all planned. He just needs us to get out of the way. So he says, now created things are all noble queens, all belonging to my royal family. That's us. That's us. And by virtue of my will that animates them and the acts of my divine will exercises in them, they have the right to ask for the coming of my kingdom. We have the right to say, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. This is our father. Only one prayer that Jesus taught us. It has everything in it. Asking for the coming of the kingdom. Because it is also our kingdom, their kingdom. And in order to ask with right for the coming of the kingdom of the divine fiat, it is necessary to be one from our family in whom our will has its first place, its throne, its life. This is why the why first I made you, Louisa, to be born in it. You were the firstborn in the divine will of, of if you want to say, the new Adam and of the new Eve, Jesus and Mary, so that it might have its right of paternity over you, Louisa, and you, Louisa, will have the rights of daughter in order to have the rights to ask for its kingdom, not, not you alone, but also by virtue of all created things every animal, every vegetable, every mineral, that is all those innumerable acts of our divine will exercises in all creation to ask that our kingdom and yours may come. It's our kingdom. Jesus says, he, Adam was stripped of his garments. He says, I'm going to reclothe you in divine nobility. Our father is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. My daughter, who can aspire to have right to be king, if not a son of a king? Even more, everyone sees in him the right that the kingdom shall be his. But if they see a servant, a peasant aspiring to it, who does not belong to the royal family and says that he has the right to be king of that kingdom, uh, the kingdom shall be his, this one is considered insane and he deserves all mockeries in the same way one who wanted to ask for my kingdom 
my holy divine will did not reign in him being in the condition of a servant does not have the right to ask for my kingdom and if he asks for it it is without right now see jesus taught one prayer to his apostles and we're part of it and now he says now what is it the, the saints were to be they were to know love and serve god now jesus says to louisa I want my children to know, love, and possess God. This new and divine way of holiness is here. And we begin little by little. Nobody has the fullness of it, but little by little to learn this and to put this into practice. And if he asks for it, it is by without right, it is a simple way of speaking. Now, suppose that a king had his children, hundreds and thousands of children, all belonging legitimately to his royal family, do all of them not have the right to occupy noble positions, not unseemly to their status, or to say the kingdom of our father is our kingdom because we carry his royal blood in our veins. Now in all creation, in the children who shall belong to the kingdom of, my, of the divine fiat shall flow, flow more than blood. It's, it's more than, than blood that's, that God is breathing into us. The life of it, it shall give them the right to belong to the royal and celestial family in such a way that all shall be kings and queens, all shall occupy noble positions worthy of the family to which they belong. Therefore, created things have more right than the kingdom of my divine will to come because they are all daughters of heaven and all acts of my very will that ask for it in them that the creatures themselves by doing their human will have reduced themselves to the condition of servants. We're going back to the condition of children. This is, this is what God is doing. This pause that he had was for the church to get ready for the divine will to reign, sanctification to be here. Therefore, when you, in the name of the heavens, of the sun, of the sea, and all other created things, ask for the coming of the kingdom of my eternal fiat, you force my will to ask for the coming of its kingdom because we're echoing Jesus's words. And do you think it is nothing that a divine will praise in each created thing as you impetrate its kingdom? Therefore, continue, never draw back. Even more, you must know that it is my will itself that puts you on the way in all creation to have its daughter together with it in all of its acts to make you do whatever it does and wants from you. We become one with God again, as Adam was. Never to be separated as Adam separated. Volume 20, 2, 13, 19, 27. I was following the divine will and its acts in the creation and a doubt arose in my mind. How can it be that Jesus says that until the kingdom of his divine will comes upon earth, the glory of creation, the glory of redemption shall be incomplete. We haven't seen anything yet. Complete creation is not completed. Redemption is not completed. Because creation, redemption, see, this is what, this is what Jesus tells Louisa. Every leaf on a tree is an I love you. Every blade of grass is an I love you. Every drop of water is an I love you. Okay. That, that's creation. When you, when you pray the rounds of creation, you're entering in, you're breathing in that I love yous to breathe back out to God like a waves of the shore, this uh, divine I love you. Then redemption, the suffering that Jesus, the new Adam, Mary, the new Eve went through, the, 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 the tears, the sighs, the, the, the blood. I mean, just think of the crucifixion. I mean, you, Mel Gibson helps us to get a glimpse of this. But when you meditate on the cross, Jesus, see one of the things in the divine will is the gift of bilocation. It's not the bilocation of the saints. Jesus takes us where he wants to take us. He'll take us to Golgotha where we can witness this. He takes us to Bethlehem to see his birth. He'll takes us, takes us to the garden of Eden to see Adam being created. He wants us to see how much he loves us. And this is the thing that's, that's, that's so, so beautiful with, with, with the divine will. But God is, these acts that, that, are, that we are called to do in, in creation, redemption, uh, bring about sanctification. So there's more I love yous in redemption than in creation. 
but sanctification, there's more I love you in sanctification than creation and redemption combined. Why? You're praying in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. This is an explosion of I love you to the throne of God, as Adam did, as Jesus did, as Mary did. We're, we, we are going to enter into a new and divine way of holiness that the Holy Father prophesied about. It's a new beginning for us. So she says, following the divine will and acts of the creation that she's doing around of creation, a doubt arose in my mind. How can it be that Jesus says until the kingdom of his divine will comes upon earth, the glory of creation, the glory of redemption will be incomplete. How can this be? Does the supreme will perhaps not have the virtue of glorifying itself? Indeed, it possesses this virtue. It is more than enough for its glory. Yet he says that if his will does not extend its kingdom in the midst of creatures, its glory on the part of creation shall be incomplete. So she's giving us this thing that Jesus said, this quote that Jesus said, for us to begin to understand. Jesus says, my daughter, the thing itself is most clear. Until my divine will is known, until it has, has first place of honor, as it did with Adam, and the dominion, here's the dominion again, in each being that has come out of its creative hands, its glory shall always be incomplete. So we have to go back to what Adam had before the fall, or it's, it's, it's not complete. Our prime purpose, Jesus says, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in creation was that we release from us the supreme will that being bilocated in all creation extends everywhere in the heavens and the sun and the sea and the flower and the plants, even in the earth. And it brings in each being comes out of our creative hands, constituted itself life of everything in order to form its life in each being and bilocating itself in each creature that it might have as many of its lives and kingdom to dominate for as many creatures as would come out to the light. So Jesus said, there's this explosion of I love you's all around us. So he says, this was my purpose, that in my kingdom, there be no servants, but my children, and, the, and they become kings like me. This shall happen with my divine will. Oh, how I, God, await it to be given back its complete glory in the creation, and that it be recognized that everything, everything belongs to the divine will. It belongs back to God. So as to be able to say, everything is yours, let us reign together. This is the oneness with God that's coming. How it awaits for its knowledge is on its supreme fiat to cover the paths in order to stir, to call, to press creatures, to come into my kingdom. So as to form my true children to whom I can give the title of kings. This is why I have so much interest that these manifestations and, and the book of heaven on my divine will be known because this is about my greatest act. That is the fulfillment of my glory and the complete good of humanity. Volume 20, 2, 19, 19, 27. I was continuing my flight in the divine fiat. My sweet Jesus made himself seen coming out from within my interior. That's where, these, that's where God is. And braiding his hands with mine. See, when you braid something, you don't know what's, what, what is what. It becomes one. Inviting me to fight with him. And I was so very little, I did not feel capable, strong to fight with Jesus. I was disheartened, nor I was disheartened, nor did I dare to fight with Jesus. And he incited me to fight. He told me, courage, my daughter, try if you will, win, and you shall win the kingdom of my divine will, nor shall you stop because you are little, because I, God, have placed at your disposal all the strength of created things. So together with your fights, all the strength contained in the heavens, in the sun, in the water, in the wind, in the sea, they all wage battle on me. Why do they do it? They do it with me to make me surrender the kingdom of the divine fiat. They do it with creatures in order that with weapons that each created thing has in its power to make them surrender to recognizing my most holy divine will so that the creatures may let it rain and let themselves, let it rain, let it rain as they let themselves, let it rain. And wanting to win, they all have placed themselves as though in order for battle. 
We are at war and God's going to win. So we'll be back in 15 minutes in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.